this hi this is single this is the Mars rover suspension system project and this presentation we'll be going for the introduction the assumptions of your body, body diagram the hand calculations optimization and we'll end up with a conclusion this project is about designing a suspension system for a Mars rover with the ability to resist static and fatigue failure. To achieve this, the suspension must be optimized and analyzed to meet the following out outcomes. We must check for static yielding and factor of the suspension system by calculating the location and value of the maximum shear stress. We must calculate the fatigue resistance of the system and we must optimize the design to meet safety requirements while achieving the lightest weight possible. In this project, we assume the angle of 75 degrees between the shock and tubes does not change, that the tube does not deflect, and we also assume a small strain, factors for endurance limits such as temperature, modification, reliability, and miscellaneous effects are ineligible, considering the calculations to be for an actual mechanical component. For this project, it's optimized or designed to have a life cycle of 500,000 or better, a static safety factor of 3 or better, the sun is going to have a force of 850 pounds horse and a minimum of zero. Our diameter is going to be 4 inches and our length is 12. We have a standard hollow tube. The tube is, follows the standard of the SAE. It's a 1050. It, it is hot roll, meaning that it's going to be 90 kpsi and an ideal strength of 49.5 kpsi. Well, we're going to go ahead and try to solve for the reaction forces, the shear and normal diagrams, the different stresses and the endurance limit, the cycles of failure, and the optimal summations of the hull tube. We use the summation of forces and the sum of the moments to find the unknowns demonstrated on the free body diagram. At the right, we have our normal bending stretch distributions, and at the left, we have a simplified version of the force applied to the rock. Here we have the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram, both obtained from the free body diagram from the previous slide. From the shear force diagram, we obtain our maximum and minimum stresses. The maximum stress from the highest point in our diagram, that is 447.5 psi, and the minimum stress from our lowest point in the shear force diagram, that is equal to 273.77 psi. In the hand calculations portion, we utilize table A-8 in the appendix for reference diameter values. Our initial investigative purpose is a diameter of 1 inch was selected with a thickness of 1 8 inch. This selection would determine the size modifier, KB value, with the referencing range to be under 2 inch diameter. With this in mind, we are utilizing the smallest standard dimensions in the table to see what factor of safety is and how far it may derive, deviate from n equals 3. We further minimize the size later on using MATLAB code. In this next slide, we're solving for the modified endurance limit. And in this formula, we have to solve for the Ka value, which is the surface factor. And using the chart below, we recognize that we're using a hot roll, and our Ka value is solving the formula. Then in the next portion, we solve for KB, and using our diameter, which is 1 8 inch, it's between 0.11 and 2 inches. So we use that formula there to determine our DE value. And from our DE value, we can solve for the KB value. And next, we can solve for the KC, which is uh, our system is bending. So it's just equal to 1. And after that, we need our unmodified endurance limit, which is 0.5 times our uh, ultimate tensile strength. And our ultimate tensile strength is 90 kpsi, which is found on appendix A20. And through that value, we, having solved for the un unmodified endurance limit, now we can plug in all our values for K, KB, KC, and the unmodified endurance limit to solve for our unmodified endurance limit, which is equal to 25.04 kpsi. Next, through using the dimensions of our tube, we can solve for the area, which is equal to 0.3436 inches squared, 
and the moment of inertia, which is equal to 0 0.0336 inches to the fourth. And with the area and the moment of inertia, we can solve for our maximum stress, which is equal to the bending stress plus the axial stress. And that value is equal to 33,276 psi. Also, our minimum stress is equal to zero. And with our maximum stress value and the minimum stress value, we can further plug those in to solve for our mid-range component stress, as well as the amplitude component stress. And those are equal to 16,638 psi. In this slide, we can determine the A and B values, which are variable constants for finding the cycles to failure for the suspension system. So our A value is equal to the fatigue strength fraction times the ultimate tensile strength squared, all divided by the modified endurance limit. And our value we got was 2.2745 times 10 to the fifth. Our B value is equal to negative one third log times the fatigue strength fraction times ultimate tensile strength divided by the modified endurance limit. And that value is equal to negative 0 0.163 Next, we can solve for the reversible stress using our amplitude stress value and the mid-range component stress value and our ultimate tensile stress value and our ultimate tensile strength value. And we determined their value is 20,411 psi. After that, we can determine our cycles to failure, which is the end value, using our A and B solved above, and then our reversible stress value. And we, we got 3,491,600 cycles. And with the end value, we can determine our factor of safety, which is our end value divided by ND, which is the design life cycles, the given value. And we got 6.98. And although not correct, we know that the dimensions can be scaled down. The um, safety factor values and cycles to failure value are not too far off from the desired values. The following slides show how we got the optimal dimensions with respect to factor of safety and cycles of failure to be three. In the, ne the next following four slides, you'll be able to determine the, how we calculated each of the components mentioned in the before slides. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take a look at the following four slides. And in this final slide, we were able to determine that the safety factor was of 3.0055, which is more than the one uh, required for the total project to be functional. After taking into account all the requirements that we had to consider before developing the shaft, we took the mat to MATLAB to try to develop a code that would have met the requirements and be at the same time safe. We had to find our unmodified endurance limit, which is fundamental for a modified one. We found all k factors that would go along into an equation to find our modified endurance factor. All factors k, a, k, b, and k, c are important, but the one we modified was the k, b factor. We took the dimensions that were allowed to allow to change the thickness and the diameter in order to optimize the result and get the best shaft possible. Changing the diameter and thickness was beneficial to finding a shaft that would resist the amount of cycles the rover would have to undergo, as well as the weight and fatigue of its life on Mars. By putting all this on MATLAB, we were able to modify our thickness and diameter as we would like until we found a good safety factor that would last the cycles of life that were required. On the right, you're able to, to see our diameter, our safety factor, our cycles, and our thickness. We also utilize the SOLIDWORKS um, program to show how the suspension system deformed under the optimized assigned conditions. From the study using our optimized dimensions found in MATLAB, the cycles of failure came out to be roughly 
thousand cycles, which came reasonably close to the desired 1,500,000 cycles. This margin of error may have occurred because of the simulation's bias and applied force issues. To conclude, we were able to achieve our goal of creating a shaft that would be able to resist our required cycles of life before failure, resist the yielding factors, meet the constraints, and be at a minimal weight all while being under the requirements of our safety factor. Our goal was achieved by optimizing our dimensions and being able to analyze everything through MATLAB where we could easily modify our values until we found our desired dimensions. We ended with the safety factor of 3.005, uh, 1.5027 times 10 to the 6 cycles of failure, a diameter of 0.95 inches, and a thickness of 0.1263 inches. All of these values met the requirement constraints placed upon us, thus leading to a successful shock tool. We took our dimensions and processed it through SOLIDWORKS in order to find out if our optimized design was able to withstand all the cycles and fatigue. In doing this, we found that our dimensions were optimal and at the same time reasonable. Some of the challenges that we encountered were trying to figure out all the modified factors and the unmodified endurance one. We also had some difficulty developing a MATLAB code and finding the desired dimensions to fulfill the constraint applied to us. Overall, our rover would be at optimal use with all dimensions and constraints successively accounted for.